Kevin has excelled June 2019 Foundation GCSC Maths Tip 2. Oh, let's do this. Question 1. Write 0 0.75 as a fraction. Stick it in your calculator, press equals, you get 3 quarters. Number 2. Write these numbers in order of size starting with the smallest number. So the smallest is minus 3, and then minus 1, and then 0, 2, 4. Number 3, I write down two factors of 15. So factors are numbers that go into 15, there's 4 of them, and there's 1, 3, 5, 15. Number 4, change 1756 grams into kilograms. So 1 kilogram is 1000 grams. So we divide this by 1,000, we get 1.756 kilograms. Number 5, write the number 2 million uh, in digits. So, sorry, in figures. So, a million has 6 zeros. So this is two zero 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 zero. Number six. Dave goes into a cafe and orders two cups of coffee and a piece of cake. Each cup of coffee costs two pound seventy-five, and the cake costs two pound ninety. Dave pays with a £10 note. Uh, he thinks he will get more than £1.50 in change. Is Dave correct? Okay, well, let's work out the cost. So the coffee is 2 times £2.75. Which is £5.50. The cake is £2.90. So add those together and we get £8.40. So his change is then ten pounds minus eight pound forty. Which is one pound sixty. Which is more than one pound fifty. So yes he is correct. Okay, number seven, there are Y boats on a lake. There are seven people in each boat. Write an expression in terms of Y for the total number of people in the boats. So, if there were five boats, we would do seven times five. There are Y boats, so it's seven times Y, which is just seven why? 8a. Simplify a times b times 7. So a times b is a b. Multiplication doesn't matter which order we do it in, so we can write this as 7ab. Part b. Simplify y times y times y. 
So y times y is y squared times y again is y cubed. But C simplify fully E times E times E times F over E times E times F times F. Okay. So up on top we could first of all say we have E cubed times F And on the bottom, we have e squared f squared. Now, the top and bottom have common factors which we can divide away. So, e cubed divided by e squared is just e on top. And then the top has an f, the bottom has an f squared. So the f cancels out with one power of f on the bottom. So we get left with e over f. Okay, number nine. Uh, the pictogram shows information about the number of vinyl records sold in a shop on Monday and on Tuesday. So here, one circle represents eight vinyl records. So, part A wants us to write down the number of vinyl records sold first of all on Monday, so that's three times eight so that's 24. And then on Tuesday, we have two whole records. So that's 2 times 8. And then a quarter of the record would be 2. So it's 2 times 8. Add 2. Which is 18. Okay, then for part B, we are told on Wednesday and Thursday, a total of 36 vinyl records were sold. Uh, the number of records sold on Thursday was 8 times the number of records sold on Wednesday. Use this information to complete the picked graph. Okay. So we can do this with a ratio. So we know 36 was sold in total and the ratio Wednesday to Thursday. Well, 8 times more were sold on Thursday. So that's 1, 2, 8. So we add part of the ratio together. 1 add 8 is 9. Divide 36 by 9, which is 4, and then multiply each part of the ratio by 4. So we get 4 to 32. So on Wednesday, we need half a circle. And on Thursday, we need four whole circles. Okay, next up, we're given three symbols, so two inequalities and one equals sign. We want to put one symbol in each box to make four true statements. So, first up, we have 14 box 21. So, 14 is less than 21, so we use that guy. Next, 4 at 7, box 103 minus 92. So both sides of that are 11, so we want an equals sign. 
Okay, then we have two squared, which means two times two, box two times two. So that again wants and equals. And then finally we have uh, minus three box minus five. So minus three is bigger than minus five. So then it's an arrow pointing right. Okay, number 11, P, is 7R add 3Q. We'll count the value of P when R is 5 and Q is minus 4. So, P is 7 times 5 add 3 times minus 4. So 7 times 5 is 35. 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. So we have 35 minus 12 is 23. Okay, next up, here is part of a trend time timetable between Brighton and London. Graham gets to the station in Brighton at 7.15. Work out how many minutes he will wait until 7.22. So, all we need to do there is 22 minus 15 is 7 minutes. Okay, then for part B, uh, work out how long it will take the 7.22 train to get to London. So the 7.22 gets to London at 9 o'clock. So let's go from 7.22 to 8. First of all, so there are 60 minutes in an hour. So to get from 7.22 to 8 o'clock, that's 60 minus 22. So that's 38 minutes. And then from 8 to 9 o'clock, that's 1 hour. So altogether, it's one hour, 38 minutes. Okay, number 13, the diagram shows nine identical squares inside of a rectangle. The length of the rectangle is 12 centimetres. We want to work out the width. So the way that we're going to do this is by using the squares. So, the going from left to right, uh, there are six square lengths uh, along the length of the rectangle. So that tells us six times the square side length is 12 centimetres. So if we divide that by 6, the square side length is 2 centimetres. Now, going along the width of the rectangle, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 squares, so the width is 5 times 2. Which is 10 centimetres. Okay, number 14, we have a ratio. So I have a whole playlist linked in the description 
down below on downloadable or share past paper exam questions. So we want to write the ratio 4.5 to 2.25 in the form n to 1. Now, all that that means is we want to turn the right hand side into 1. Now, the way that we do that is by dividing both parts by 2.25. So we get 4.5 over 2.25 to 1. Now, 4.5 divided by 2.25 is 2. So we have 2, 2, 1. Okay, then number 15, a garden is in the shape of a rectangle 90 metres by 60 metres. Flowers are grown in 40% of the garden. The rest of the garden is grass. We want to work out uh, the area of the garden that is grass. So, first up, let's work out the total area. So that's 90 metres times 60 metres. Now that's 5,400 metres squared. Now if 40% is covered in flowers, 60% is covered in grass. So we want to find 60% of 5,400. Now, given that this is a calculator paper, the quickest way to do this is to do 0 0.6 times 5,400. So that's going to give us uh, 3,240 metres squared. Number 16. Four biased coins A, B, C and D are thrown. The table shows the probability that each coin will land on heads. Part A. Uh, which coin is the least likely to land on heads? Okay, so to make the probabilities comparable, really we want them in the same form. So because the top two are in decimals, let's turn the others into decimals too. So one third is 0 0.3 recurring. So that means I go 0 0.3333333 forever. It never stops. And 30% is 0 0.3. So again, part A, which coin is least likely to land on heads? That's the smallest decimal, which here is 0 0.033. So it's B. Uh, a part 2, which coin is most likely to land on heads? So the biggest probability here is one third, because it's 0 0.3, 333, 3, 3, 3, forever. So that is C. Given okay, part B, Julie says uh, the probability that C will land on heads is the same as the probability that C will land on tails. Is Julie correct? You must give a reason. So the probability of heads with C is one third. 
the only other thing that can happen is chaos. So she is not correct. The probability of tails is two thirds. And then we are told Queen, Queen B is going to be thrown 4,000 times. A uh, work out an estimate for the number of times Queen B will land on heads. So to do that, we do the probability times uh, the number of times that the coin is going to be thrown. So here we're going to do 0 0.033 times 4,000. And that gives us 132. Okay, number 17. There are 84 calories in 100 grams of banana. There are 87 calories in 100 grams of yogurt. Pretty has 60 grams of banana and 150 grams of yogurt for breakfast. We want to work out the total number of calories in this breakfast. Okay, so let's do the banana. So we can find how many calories are in 10 grams by dividing by 10. So 10 grams is 8.4 calories. So then 60 grams is 6 times that. Uh, which gives us 50.4 calories. Okay, then we can do the same for the yoghurt. So, find 10 grams by dividing by 10. So that's 8.7 calories. Multiply that by 15. And 150 grams is 130.5 calories. So then the total is 50.4. Add 130.5 uh, Which gives us 180.9 calories K number 18 Machines A and B make car parts Machine A makes six parts every 10 minutes. Machine B makes 13 parts every 15 minutes. On Monday, Machine A makes parts for 12 hours. Machine B makes parts for 10 hours. We want to work out the total number of parts the machines make on Monday. Okay. So let's do a first. So if it makes six parts every ten minutes, we can work out how many parts it makes per hour. So there are six lots of ten minutes in one hour. So six times six gives us thirty-six parts per hour. Now it works for 12 hours, so 12 
times 36 gives us 432. Now machine B makes 13 parts every 15 minutes. 15 minutes is quarter of an hour. So to work out the number of parts per hour, we do 4 times 13. So that gives us 52 parts per hour. Now machine B works for 10 hours. So 10 times 52 is 520 parts. So the total is 432 and 520 which is 952 Okay, number 19 here is a plan drawing of a kitchen in the scale 1 to 30. So that means every one centimetre on this is 30 centimetres in the real kitchen. So we are told Sam is going to put a small table in the kitchen. The table must be more than 180 centimetres from point A and 150 centimetres from B, C. We want to show by shading on the diagram where Sam can put the table. So the first thing we need to do is convert the real life measurements into our scale. So 180 centimetres Divided by 30 gives us 6 centimetres. So we want it to be more than 6 centimetres from A. And then 150 divided by 30 is 5 centimetres from B and C. So for A, you need to set your compass to 6 centimetres, put point on point A, and draw this arc inside of the rectangle. So the table is not allowed inside of that arc. And then for 5 centimetres from BC, just measure 5 centimetres along on top and on bottom and then join those two points together with a straight line. So the table is not allowed to be to the right of that purple line. So the table is allowed to be anywhere in this region. Okay, number 20A. Solve 14N is greater than 11N add 6. So we want to get N on its own on one side with a number on the other. So the first thing to do would be to subtract 11N from both sides. So that's going to leave 3N is greater than 6. You then divide both sides by 3. We get n is greater than 2. 
uh, length part B or the number line below show the set of values of X for which X plus 3 is greater than minus 2 but less than or equal to 4. So the first thing we need to do there is turn the middle into just X not X add 3. So to get rid of the 3 we're going to subtract 3 from all three parts. So minus two minus three is minus five. And then we got x in the middle. And then that is less than or equal to one. Now above minus five, because x is not allowed to equal minus 5, we put a hollow circle. And then above 1, because x is allowed to equal 1, we put a coloured in circle. And then we join those two together with a line Okay, number 21 on the grid below, draw the graph of y equals 2x minus 3 for values of x from minus 2 to 4. Okay, so to draw or plot a straight line, ideally we find three sets of coordinates. If you only do two, You've no way of knowing if it's right. If you do three and all three points lie on the line, chances are you're probably right. So, let's use zero, one, and two as our values for x. So when x is zero, y is 2 times 0, minus 3, which is minus 3. When x is 1, y is 2 times 1, minus 3, which is minus 1. And then when x is 2, y is 2 times 2, minus 3, which is 1. So I plot those three points. So this guy is 0, minus 3. Be careful of the scale on the x-axis. Every 2 squares is 1. So then there's the point 1, minus 1. And then there's the point 2, 1. Make sure you draw the line all the way between x is minus 2 and x is 4, as I have. Here. Game number 22. Hannah is planning a school trip for 195 students. She asks a sample of 30 students where they would like to go. Each student chooses one place. Part A. How many of the 195 students would you expect to want to go to the theme park? Okay, so for that we're going to use the sample. So in the sample, 10 people said theme park. So that's 10 out of 30, which is one third. So by the sample, we would expect one third of the 195 people to want to go to the theme park. So we then find a third of 195, which is 195 divided by 3, which is 65. Okay, then part 
be on such a state, any assumption we have made and explain how it may affect our answer to part A. So the biggest one with sampling is that it should always be random. So here if we've assumed it's random, then if it's not random, maybe she asked all boys. For example, now it might be more likely that boys want to go to the theme park than girls. Another assumption, we've assumed that the 13 students she sampled are part of the 195 students going on the trip. If not, they might be from a different year group, maybe and they might have different choices than the people actually going. Okay, next up, a container is in the shape of a cuboid. Uh, the container is two thirds full of water. A cup holds 275 milliliters of water. What is the greatest number of cups which can be completely filled with water from this tank. Okay, so for this we're going to need to know that one centimeter cubed is one milliliter. From that then we need to work out the volume of the tank. So that's 30 times 6 times 19 Uh, which gives us 3,420. Centimeters cubed. Now we're told the tank is two thirds full. So now we want to work out two thirds of that. So the water So, 3,420 divided by 3 gives us 1,140 centimeters cubed. So that's one third. We want two thirds. So, two times that. gives us 2,280 centimeters cubed. So, in terms of milliliters, uh, we have 2,280 milliliters of water. Now to work out how many cups we can fill, we then divide that by the capacity of a cup. So 2,280 divided by 275. Now that gives us 8.5. Two nine blah blah blah. We want whole cups. So the answer is eight. Okay, twenty four. We have soccer tower trigonometry. So I have two playlists on this linked in the description. One explaining how to do it, and the other full of downloadable past paper exam questions. So we have a right angle triangle. We want to calculate the length AB. So AB is this guy. So let's call it X. Okay. 
Uh, and we also want to give our answer to two decimal places. So, with respect to the angle, a B is the opposite, and the 16 centimetre length is the hypotenuse. So now we go to sock tower to work out which function we want. So, is it SO? S-O-H. Yes, it is. So, SO tells us sine of the angle. So, sine of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So, for us, we have sine 38 is equal to x over 16 now we want x so we multiply through by 16 and we get 16 sine 38 is equal to x which to two decimal places gives us 9.85 centimetres. Okay, number 25, we have error intervals. So, Sally used her calculator to work out the value of a number y. The answer on her calculator display began 8.3 Complete the error interval for y So it's an inequality The lower bound is the smallest possible number y could be So the number might end 8.3 That might be the number So 8.3 is our lower bound Now the upper bound is the smallest number y cannot be. So that would be 8.4. Key number 26. So again we have ratio and again I have a whole playlist down below on foundation. Past paper exam questions on ratio you can download. So, 360 pounds is shared between Abby, Ben, Chloe and Dinesh. The ratio of the amount Abby gets to what Ben gets is 2 to 7. Chloe and Dinesh each get 1.5 times the amount Abby gets. We want to work up the amount that Ben gets. Okay, so first up we need to get Chloe and Dinesh involved in the ratio. So their part of the ratio is going to be 1.5 times Abby's part. So 1.5 times 2 is 3. So A to B to C to D is 2 to 7 to 3 to 3. Now we want to split 360 then in that ratio. So we add the parts of the ratio together. So 2 at 7 at 3 at 3. is 15. So now we want to know how many times does that go into 360. So 360 divided by 15 is 24. 
So, if we wanted to work out how much everyone gets, we would multiply each number by 24. We only want n. So, for n, we do 7 times 24. Or 7 pounds times 24. So, that gives us 168 pounds. Okay, next up. Alright. 0 0.00562 in standard form. So, standard form is always a single digit. So here it's going to be 5 point anything we need in the decimal. So point six two times 10 to a power. Now here, because the number is less than 1, we need a negative power. Now to work out the number, we count how many places the decimal moves from there to where it is between the zeros. So, 1, 2, 3. Okay, then part B, right, 1.452 times 10 to the 3 as an ordinary number. So, all that that does is move the decimal place three places to the right. So that's 1,452. And then final page. So first up, here are the first five terms of a Fibonacci sequence. So we have 3, 3, 6, 9, 15. We want to pop that. Part A wants us to work out the next two terms. So in a Fibonacci sequence, you add the two previous terms to get the next one. So what's happened here? 3 add 3 is 6. 3 add 6 is 9. Uh, 6 add 9 is 15. So our next one is 9 add 15, which is 24. And then our next one is 15 add 24, which is 39. Given part B, we're told uh, the first three terms of a different Fibonacci sequence are A, A, and 2A. We want to find the sixth term. So our fourth one is going to be A add 2A, so that's 3A. Our fifth one is 2a add 3a, so that's 5a. And then our sixth one is 3a add 5a, which is 8a. Okay, now the final question, we have column vectors. So vector A is 4, 5, vector B is 3, 2. Work out A minus 2B. Okay, so 2B is just 6, 4. Now when you subtract vectors, you just work across. So, A minus 2B is 4, 5, minus 6, 4. So that's going to give us 
minus 2 and 1. Okay then guys, that's another one done, well done. Sorry if you found this useful, please do give us a thumbs up, get subscribed to the channel, share with your friends, don't forget to check out all the content in the description down below, it's all very useful for your revision. Any requests, let me know in a comment. For now, take it easy, take care.